This program is rated G and is suitable for general audiences. Welcome to Wall of Bakers, the ultimate baking competition where amateurs must rise to the occasion. Come hell or high water, here we go. By competing in front of their baking idols. That's the beauty of it. Four home bakers are about to be pushed to their limits through three rounds of sweet competition. Oh! oh. Awesome. Judging them is the wall, stacked with the country's biggest names in baking. After each challenge, one home baker is eliminated. In the end, the wall declares the winner of the $10,000 prize. They look fantastic. Who will crumble under the pressure? Oh, no. It's burnt. You can't serve it. And who will take the cake? Do both hands now. Yes! Oh! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Praise of the audience. I love it. I'm Noah Cap, and this is Wall of Bakers. Amateur bakers around the world dream of the day that they get called up to the big leagues. Well, today, four home bakers will get their chance to knock it out of the kitchen in front of a wall of their culinary icons. And one will walk away with $10,000. Let's meet the competitors. He's a restaurant manager who loves hosting dinner parties. Tyson Brocklesby. Are we smack dab in the middle of a who wore it best? We are. I'm coming for your gig, Noah. <gasps> <laughs> I grew up watching the Food Network, and I always wanted to be a, a celebrity chef. I got like a little easy bake oven. Oh my god, I almost burned my parents' house down. So I've always been interested in baking, and today I want to impress these chefs pretty bad. Avid camper, gardener, and grandmother of five, Jan Bjarnison. When I'm baking, I try to get my grandkids up on stools next to me on the counter. They eat pretty much anything I bake. <laughs> but today, I'm going to have to work a little harder to impress the chefs on the wall. <laughs> a stay-at-home mom who loves to go to adventurous places in her baking, Krista Forschner. Hello. 12 years ago, my husband came home with a stand mixer and I didn't even know how to bake a cookie. But the more I practiced, the more I made myself happy, making other people happy and continuing to do that. That's why I like to bake. Today, I'm just going to let my personality shine as much as possible. A business communications college professor, Robin Verley. Hello, Robin. Hello. <laughs> what I love about baking is that I feel really relaxed. So after I teach stressful classes, it's good to just go off and bake sometimes. I want to show the wall what I can do and get feedback on how to improve, because today I'm not a teacher, I'm the student. Jan, Tyson, Krista, Robin. Are you ready to face the wall? Yes. yes. This is your wall of bakers. Tara O'Brady, Stephanie Duong, Guy Rawlings, Anna Olson, David Russo, twin sisters Jenna Hutchinson and Ashley Kosowin, Joanne Yalis, Farzam Fala, Steve Hodge, Shobna Kanusami, and Lynn Crawford. Bakers, let's not keep the wall waiting. It's time for your first challenge. You all have that one dessert you've made so many times, it's a piece of cake. Cake so good that everyone wants another slice. In this round, you'll be making your crowd pleaser. This is your chance to show the wall who you are and what you bring to the bake. You have 40 minutes on the clock, and your bake starts now. Let's go! Woo yes! Woo Maple sugar. I have never been more nervous in my life, seeing everybody that I really look up to in front of me. This is crazy. 
Hello, Krista. Hello. What's your crowd pleaser? So I am making a Dutch chocolate cupcake with maple buttercream and smoked applewood bacon. I like to make cupcakes for a lot of people, but this always tends to be the one that people come back to. I just want to confirm, I heard the ending, smoked applewood bacon. Smoked applewood bacon. Nobody likes bacon. Yeah, right? <laughs> Once the chocolate cupcake batter is all mixed up, I start doing my bacon to go on top of the cupcake. I'm a huge, huge fan of bacon in any form of baking, so that is just going to be really great. OK. My crowd pleaser is donut holes with three different flavors. This is my crowd pleaser because I like donuts, and they are fun. I'm now dropping my donut holes in the fryer. While the donut holes are in the deep fryer, I can concentrate on getting the glazes done. I want to give the judges three different flavor combinations. My three different kinds are cardamom, lemon, and chocolate. Don't you just want one really good donut? Hello, Jan. Hi, Noah. Tell me about your crowd pleaser. What are you making? A uh, soft ginger cookie. Ooh. I make it all the time for Christmas. Excellent. Well, I'm excited to see this all come together. Thank you very much. You I'm excited to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. When making my ginger cookies, I have to make sure they're soft enough in the middle. Almost. Chef Duong, how can Jan ensure that she gets that soft, chewy texture? I think it depends on the recipe. Usually, uh, the addition of molasses will help with that. You a fan of ginger cookies? I love ginger cookies. It's like a warm hug. <laughs> My crowd pleaser is an Ontario Cherry Clafuti. I've made this for several dinner parties and always had rave reviews about it. And who doesn't like the word Clafuti? It's just fun to say Clafuti. So the first thing I do is I get the custard base for the Clafuti started and blended. Do both hands now. Come on, chef. Yes! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Play to the audience. I love it. <laughs> Chef Olson, Tyson working on a cherry clafuti. What is it? It's a very simple batter, almost like a crepe batter that's poured over fresh peak season cherries and then baked. I noticed Tyson took the time to pip the cherries, but he also chopped them up, which is curious because will the juices from the cherry cook into the batter? And what will that do? I'm just hoping that these set up and cook the way that I practiced. <laughs> just like that, 15 minutes, bakers. For my cupcakes, I am whipping the buttercream, and it's just plain vanilla buttercream. So I'm a little bit worried, and I think to myself, I can do better. I'm going to use the bacon grease to make a caramel with some maple syrup. We'll see how it goes. I've never made maple bacon caramel, but that's something that will really set it from just a cupcake to an awesome dessert. Might as well try something I've never done. To impress the judges, I need to elevate my dish. Right now, I'm going to make a nice toffee sauce to dip the cookies in. Chef Ola, Jan adding a toffee sauce to her ginger cookies. Is that a traditional pairing, or is that a little step outside of the box? I would serve toffee sauce with, with ginger cookies, absolutely. I hope that she adds salt somewhere in there. It's important to add a little bit of salinity just to kind of help offset it, help balance it, so that you're not just left with that sweet note at the end. OK. With the three different flavored donut holes, I'm making a strawberry jam and meringue to dip the donuts. The reason I'm making these sides is because I want to try to elevate the dish. This is your two-minute warning. Taste, creativity, presentation. You've got to have all three. I'm pretty happy with the clafuti. I just don't know if it's enough for the judges. So at the last minute, I need to do something else. I want to make a bourbon cherry sauce. I'm adding tart cherries because, you know, we have really sweet cherries in the clafuti. Count it down, Wall. Five, this is going to be close, Bakers. Three, two, one. That's Woo! time. Hands up. Well done. Hands up. That's time, Bakers. <laughs> Nicely done. Wow. Bakers, it's time to face the wall. Here are the four chefs judging your crowd pleasers. 
an authority on all things delicious, award-winning cookbook author, Chef Lynn Crawford. Part of the twin sister collaboration, Generate Cakes, and known for her couture cake designs, Chef Jenna Hutchinson. A trailblazer, celebrated for creating some of Toronto's most iconic desserts, Chef Joanne Yalis. His whimsical desserts take familiar favorites to unexpected places. Pastry chef, Farzam Fala. Jan, Tyson, Krista, and Robin. You've made your crowd pleasers. Now, let's see if they please this crowd. Krista. I took a risk and decided to make a bacon maple caramel, and I'd never tried it before. So I really hope it pays off. Krista, tell us what you've prepared for your crowd pleaser. So today I've made my Dutch chocolate cupcake with bacon as well as maple buttercream. I really wanted to try making caramel with the bacon grease because I've never tried that before. So I hope you guys really like that. It's a great cupcake. The Dutch chocolate really comes through. It's fluffy, it's well-baked, it's delicious. And you've got something going on with that bacon caramel. And to do something you haven't done before is a huge risk. I love your bacon grease caramel. I mean, the idea of reusing what's in front of you is beautiful. But the bacon in such large pieces, it's leaving my palate only tasting bacon. I think if you had maybe cooked the bacon out and then crumbling it, so it's almost like a, like a salt, that would have helped this dish really stand out. It was delicious. You can get the bacon right away, but it was sweet and salty, and it's just a perfect accompaniment. I love salt and sweet together, so this was perfect for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Krista. Thank you. Tyson. So today I've made a Ontario cherry clafouti, and then served on the side of that is a bourbon cherry reduction that also has a little bit of the Ontario cherries in it, because you can never go wrong with too much cherry. Tyson, I have to say, this is exceptional. I'm getting the texture beautifully. It's warm, it's custardy, the cherries are juicy, they're popping, beautifully done. Tyson, this is spectacular. Thank you. The clafouti, it was perfectly cooked. You know, the, the cherries were sort of chopped up. I was worried that that might affect the flavors, but no, it was really great. The sauce is amazing because this is a little bit sweet yeah. and this is a little bit tart. And that balance is just incredible. Cherry, good job. Yeah. Tyson, you can head back. <laughs> Thank you. Jan, please join us. I've prepared a soft ginger cookie along with a toffee pecan dipping sauce. Christmas in my house is pretty special and these flavors remind me of Christmas. I've never had a cookie with a dipping sauce and I thought that was a really great idea of just getting more flavor with that cookie, but it was very sweet. The cookies are crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, which is how I like them. But I agree, the sauce is a bit sweet. The only thing I might have added is maybe like a sprinkle of sea salt to kind of balance the toffee. But when these cookies hit the table, I smelled them and immediately thought of Christmas. So you hit it right on the head there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Robin. So today I made for you three different donut hole flavors. There is cardamom, chocolate, and lemon. And then I made also a meringue to go with all three flavors, as well as a homemade strawberry jam. Robin, this was a very fun dish. I love the texture of your donuts, that little crispy edge. I was not expecting that. What I'm having a little bit of a problem with is the accompaniment. I was hoping that the strawberry, maybe with the meringue, would help balance all the sweetness with a little bit of tartness, but all I'm getting on top of it is just sugar. 
I didn't quite get the relationship of the donuts to the meringue. It didn't quite come together okay. for me. The meringue only makes sense to me with the lemon flavor. The other okay. ones, I don't quite put those together, but for me, if it was all lemon flavor with the meringue, it makes complete good. sense. Okay. Yeah. Chefs, you've had a chance to taste all four crowd pleasers, so I'll ask you to make your way back up to the wall. And home bakers, I'll ask you to step forward. It's time to find out which three amateur bakers will be moving on to the next round and who will be eliminated. Chefs, have you made your decision? Yes, we have. Tyson. Your cherry clafouti was beautiful. Congratulations, you had the best crowd pleaser and you're moving on to the next round. Thank you. Krista, you took a chance with your baking caramel and it really paid off. Congratulations, you're also moving on to the next round. That means Robin and Jan, one of you will be moving forward in the competition, and one of you will be heading home. Jan, your ginger cookies were perfectly soft and chewy, but your toffee sauce was too sweet. Robin, your donuts were a fun idea, but the flavors didn't quite come together. The baker moving on to the next round is... Jan. Robin, the wall has spoken and you have been eliminated. Thank you, everyone here. It was an honor having you guys taste my food. Thank you. Well done, Robin. I'm leaving here with so much more knowledge. It just enriches my soul and leaves me with positive feelings towards where I'm going in my baking journey. Jan, Tyson, Krista, congratulations. The three of you have made it through the first round and are all now one step closer to the $10,000 prize. In this next round, you'll go where few home bakers have gone before, a professional baker's pantry. In this challenge, you'll be creating a dessert using two ingredients that are staples in the pantry of one of our chefs. He's a master chocolatier the owner of Vancouver's Temper Chocolate and Pastry, Chef Steve Hodge. Steve Hodge is intimidating. He's a powerhouse of a pastry chef, and I am shaking in my booties right now. Hello, Noah. Hello, Chef. Bakers, how are you? Great. Chef Hodge, shall we show our home bakers the ingredients in your pantry? Absolutely. The two ingredients I always have in my pantry are peanut butter and graham crackers. Peanut butter has a flavor profile that can be salty, sweet, and even earthy. It pairs so well with so many different fruits, caramel, and chocolate. Graham crackers have both sweet and nutty notes that pair perfectly with peanut butter. Graham crackers can really help to enhance the texture of any dessert. They're used as crusts and pies and tarts. Also, you can use them as toppings. Bakers, in this challenge, you must create a plate that features both of the ingredients from Chef Hodge's pantry. Whoever makes the least impressive dish will be eliminated at the end of the round. There's 40 minutes on the clock, and your bake starts now. Yep. Woo! What I love is most home bakers have worked with these ingredients in some capacity. Instantly, I know that I can make something amazing with peanut butter and graham crackers and just let them shine. Peanut butter and graham crackers, they're simple ingredients to work with. But if they use it properly, they can elevate it to the next level. And that's what I want to see. Right. I'm making a graham crusted peanut butter brownie with a buttercream and a blackberry reduction. I used to love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, so this is just gonna be a take on that. I think that the flavors are all gonna work together. 
So the first thing I need to do is get the brownie batter made. Then I'm taking my graham cracker and I'm blitzing it with peanuts. And I'm gonna sprinkle that on top of the brownies to add texture when the judges bite into it. I saw him sprinkle on the crust. But the whole point of a crust is to add texture, not just to add a sandy, dry layer. <laughs> he ground everything really fine, which is worrying me. Come on, get out of there. Jen, I want to introduce you to Chef Hodge. Hi. Hi, Jen. Jen, what are you making for us today? I'm going to make a banana cream tart, and the base will be a gray crust. Ink filling will be a pastry cream with the bananas. And where will the peanut butter be? The peanut butter will be in with the whipping cream topping. Oh. I wish you were my grandma. <laughs> it's like home cooking right there. Thank you. First of all, the graham cracker crust goes into the oven. I didn't see her set a timer or anything. No. Then I mix up the whipping cream and fold peanut butter into it. That's good. Krista, I want to introduce you to Chef Hodge. Hello. So, Krista, what are you going to make today? So, I'm going to be making a peanut butter coffee cake with a streusel topping. Where's the peanut butter? In the actual coffee cake? It's going to be cake? right in the coffee cake, mixing it right into the batter. And the graham crackers? Some are going to be ground into the coffee cake itself, and then I'm also going to use graham crackers to do the streusel topping. Well, good luck. Awesome. Thank you. This coffee cake is super basic, so instead of some of the flour, I'm actually going to use the graham cracker crumbs and hope that it does kind of the same thing. I love that she used the bunk pens. Me too. The mini bunk pens are actually very cute. 21 minutes and 45 seconds. With my brownie, I'm making a peanut butter buttercream, and I'm serving it with a blackberry sauce. There's fruit in the pot. It's peanut butter and jam. A there duh. You go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. What? Oh my peanut goodness. Peanut butter and jam. I need to get the shells out of the oven because I have to add the pastry cream filling. A little more toasty than I'd like. I take them out and they're all burned. I'm too brown, damn it. Heart in the floor. Ah. Uh. Jen's shells. When she put it in the oven, I know she didn't set a timer. Unfortunately, I think she forgot about them. They're burnt. If it's burnt, you can't serve it. Jen's shells. Unfortunately, I think she forgot about them. They're burnt. I think it's going to be an issue. 10 minutes remaining. The clock is ticking. There's no time to redo. OK. You know what, Jen? She's going for it. She's not letting that obstacle get in her way. She's going to continue on. That'll be fine. Just like that, seven minutes on the clock. I am going to work on the streusel topping right now. For the streusel, I mix the peanut butter in, and then I add the graham crackers in, too, because I want to use as much of those ingredients from the pantry as I can. Just took it out for a minute, just so I can put some of these streusel chunks on top. Chef Bala, what is a streusel? A streusel is normally a mixture of flour, butter, and sugar. It creates this beautiful little crust and hardens once it comes out of the oven, so it gives this like nice little crispy texture and also adds another layer of flavor in there. Bakers, we're knocking on the door of one minute remaining. Okay. Oh, jeez. Are her cakes coming out? Oh, Did yeah. it stick? Oh, oh nice. beautiful. Hey. They look fantastic. Final touches. Come on. Yeah. I wanted to rain icing sugar all over this dessert, and I'm leaving it to the last second to execute. Tyson going to the pantry with 10 <laughs> seconds remaining. This is nuts! Five, four, three, two, one. That's time! That's time, bakers! Whew. Bakers, it's time to face the wall. In addition to Chef Hodge, here are your judges for this round. Her chocolate chip cookie recipe is known around the world. Food writer and cookbook author, Chef Tara O'Brady. 
She's the co-owner and creative force behind Winnipeg's Jenna Ray Cakes, Chef Ashley Kossowin. Originally from France, he brings his European sensibilities to the table as co-owner of Calgary's Olia Macaron and Tea, Chef David Russo. Bakers, you got to check out Chef Hodge's pantry. Now, it's time to find out what you made using peanut butter and graham crackers. Jan. I've made a graham cracker crust tart along with a pastry cream with fresh banana, a peanut butter whip, and then garnished with a little smashed peanuts. Jan, you used the ingredients very well, and I love the flavor in your graham crust. Unfortunately, it was a little overcooked. The uh, graham uh, cracker crust, yeah, it's overcooked. But what I'd like to congratulate you on is your uh, banana pastry cream. It tastes beautiful. It's such an achievement, it's great. So well done on that. Jan, you are on the right track. Peanut butter whip, bananas, graham crust, and silky smooth velvety pastry cream. The texture on that is exactly what you want. Thank you, you're very kind. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Tyson. So chefs, for today I made you a graham crusted peanut butter brownie with a peanut butter whipped buttercream and blackberry reduction. Kind of my play on a childhood favorite of a peanut butter and jam sandwich. So enjoy. Thank you so much for this dessert. It is fudgy, it is sweet, it is just like childhood amped up. And I love the idea of a graham crust, but we need more. I saw you grinding up the graham cracker for the top of the brownie. I noticed that you ground it pretty fine. I think for that reason, it don't necessarily taste the graham cracker in this. Okay. Tyson, we have something in common. Grew up with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I love the way you executed your dessert to represent that. Your peanut butter flavor in your buttercream is there. And your brownie, you hit your flavor profile in there. You pulled it off. Thank you. Thank you, Tyson. Krista. Today I made a peanut butter and graham cracker coffee cake with a dark chocolate ganache on top and a graham cracker and peanut butter streusel underneath everything. Your streusel for me was a highlight of it. That flavor was unbelievable. I wish there was more of it. More. And I wish you had sprinkled it on top so you get that crunch in every single bite. I really like the presentation. The ganache is a burst of chocolate flavor. And the graham cracker, I think that was a good idea to add it to the cake. That works really well. In terms of the cake, because you added the graham and you substituted the flour, it's a good flavor to the cake. The bottom is amazing. I love that you used the peanut butter in the streusel. I think that was a brilliant move. It was a salty and sweet and a great kind of end to the bite. Thank you. All right, chefs, you've had a chance to taste all three dishes. I'll ask you to make your way back up to the wall. It's now time to find out which two home bakers will be moving on to the final round and who will be heading home. Chefs, have you made a decision? Yes, we have. Krista, we love the creative use of peanut butter in your streusel. It was delicious. Congratulations, you made our favorite dessert and you're moving on to the final round. That means Jan and Tyson, one of you is moving on to the next round and one of you is heading home. Jan and Tyson, one of you is moving on to the next round, and one of you is heading home. Tyson, your brownie had perfect fudgy texture, but the graham cracker got lost in your dish. Jen, your banana cream filling was velvety and bright, but your graham cracker crust was burnt. Tyson, 
you are safe. Oh, my God. Jan, the wall is spoken, and you have been eliminated. Understood. I didn't get the $10,000, but I learned a, a tremendous amount from the chefs. It's been a learning as well as an exciting experience. I'm happy. Home Bakers, congratulations. You've made it to the final round. At the end of this bake, the wall will declare one of you the winner, and that person will go home with $10,000. For your final challenge, you'll take inspiration from one of our chefs to create a dish that is truly bakery worthy. She's trained in kitchens from France to Hong Kong, the owner of Toronto's Roselle Desserts, Chef Stephanie Duong. Chef Duong, she's a really good baker. She's someone that I really look up to. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> Hello, Chef. Hi, Noah. Hi, bakers. Hello. Shall we take a look at what you brought us? Let's do it. This dessert is called the OG. It's an ooey, gooey, absolutely delicious and decadent cookie sandwich. It's comprised of two layers of hazelnut daquas, which I filled with a ring of dark chocolate ganache, and then we dunked it in chocolate and covered it with candied cocoa nibs, as well as flakes of gold leaf. Home bakers, you've seen Chef Duong's OG cookie sandwich. And now, for this final challenge, you must create your own bakery-worthy sandwich dessert. Think about what you love about your favorite sandwich and your favorite dessert and put those two great ideas together. And remember, it's a sandwich, so two sides and a middle are a must. This is the moment. There's $10,000 on the line. There's 40 minutes on the clock and your bake starts now. Yep. Fine. Oh. Tyson won the first round and I won round two, so it's pretty important for me to impress all the chefs in the final round. The pressure is on. I feel like you'd go either way. Yeah, I really could. Chef, in this challenge, what are you looking for from these sandwich desserts? Well, I'm always looking for flavor, but I think the key is nailing all the textures. When you're making a sandwich, it's easy to go overboard and have too many things going on. You know, you want to be able to hold it in your hand, take a bite, and taste everything. Right. Got to whip it till it's white and fluffy. For this challenge, I decide to make vanilla bean shortcake with buttercream and triple berry compote inside there for the top and the bottom of the sandwich. I'm gonna use cupcake tins to make uniform circles with the cake, so it's more like a cookie. Chef Kanusami, Krista working on a vanilla bean cake as her sandwich sides. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. She's um, thinking outside of the box here just because she saw something that resembled a cookie sandwich. She's now doing something more innovative right. and creative. Uh, so I'm going to make a matcha shortbread sandwich. So the inspiration behind this is a recent trip to Asia that me and my partner went on. I don't really use matcha in baking, and I have made shortbread like maybe twice. We'll see what happens. Tyson, working on a matcha shortbread, uh, what is the flavor profile of matcha? You know, matcha, so being a tea powder, it's going to be very earthy. It's quite light on the palate, right. even though it has so much depth. But that means that it can stand up to big flavors. For my filling, I am making a citrus curd. Is that calamansi? <laughs> I love this. Calamansi is a citrus from the eastern side of the world that I know holds a lot of flavor, but it can be pretty overpowering. So I'm going to fold the curd into whipped cream to give a little bit of balance. I think his flavor pairings are very, very refined. The one thing that I'm worried about, though, is texture. You want to make sure that the center layer has almost the same consistency as the outside, because then when you take a bite, the center doesn't squish out. And I'm glad you used the word squish. I was like, there's going to be a fancy baker word for this, but it is a squish. <laughs> 
middle of my sandwiches is buttercream and a nice tart compote. We're cooking down the raspberries and blueberries. She's also putting the strawberries. I really like the flavor of the berries to speak. So my favorite thing is getting those chunks in there. I want that little center of excitement. Home bakers, 10 minutes to go. And I want to do something extra. So I am dipping my sandwiches in ruby chocolate. It's just the most beautiful looking chocolate you will ever see. Chef Kanasami, what's special about ruby chocolate? Ruby chocolate, it doesn't have flavor profiles of the milk or dark. It is quite bright and tart. So I'm wondering how she's gonna balance that out because the berries can also be quite tart. As I'm dipping these guys, I'm trying to be delicate, but it is not going the way that I hoped. The chocolate is still very warm. Oh no, so soft. Oh! oh. That's gonna get messy because the mm. cream's gonna start going into the chocolate. Yes. The last thing I want is hot chocolate when I'm trying to dip my sandwiches, but there is no time. Oh no. This is a mess. Minutes on the clock, bakers. Shoot. As I'm dipping my sandwiches, it is not going the way that I hoped. It's so soft. Oh. oh. The chocolate is still very warm. Oh, no. So last minute, I decide to throw them in the blast chiller to cool. This is going to be so close. Sorry. It's OK. I take the cookies out of the oven, and to be honest, they're a little dark. I think he burnt his cookies. Oh, no. They were quite dark. They looked yeah. very brown. Uh-oh. At this point, I can't really do anything, and I'm pretty confident with the taste, so now I've just got to go with it. And it'll be better once it's all put together. Let's go, final stretch. Oh. This clock is ticking, and both our home bakers still adding touches. Oh, gosh. Final round. 10 grand. You want it? It's going to happen now, Krista. Five, four, three, two, one. That's time. That's up. That's time. That is as close as it gets. Krista! <sighs> Bakers, it's time to face the wall. In addition to Chef Duong, here are your final round judges. Internationally celebrated TV personality and author of more than 10 best-selling cookbooks, Chef Anna Olson. An expert in handcrafted bread, he brings a local seasonal approach to baking, Chef Guy Rawlings. Pastry chef, culinary educator, and founder of Vancouver's Jewel Box Pastry Shop, Soiret, Chef Shobna Kanusami, Krista and Tyson, we asked you to create a bakery-worthy sandwich dessert. Let's see what the chefs think. Tyson. So chefs, in front of you, you have something that was inspired by a recent trip to Asia with my partner a calamansi curd that's sandwiched between two matcha cookies, and then there's a drizzle of white chocolate and some toasted pistachios on top. To speak to the filling, I love the idea of calamansi curd and whipped cream put together. It just adds a luxurious factor to it. But I would have liked more of the curd just to get a higher acid. And when I bit into it, like the cream bazooka out of there, just like. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you have to think about how everything eats. Okay. While the components itself are delicious, when I bite into it, the bite is not nice. You just get very airy cream, and you have a very sturdy cookie, and it just it doesn't mingle nicely. The shortbread, it was slightly overbaked, and I think it's that over caramelization that perhaps masks the matcha tea flavor that I wish I was picking up a little more of. Matcha tends to dry out a dough. If you actually baked it in a, at a lower temperature, you would have kept some of the color of the cookie, 
and decrease the caramelization a little bit. And I agree with Chef uh, Rollins here where I would have loved a punch of that curd okay. in the middle that would have completely brightened you up. Thank you, Tyson. Thank you. Krista? Okay, Chef, so today I made for you a ruby chocolate dipped vanilla bean shortcake with triple berry compote and buttercream filling. Awesome, Krista, I, I loved your vision. I thought your cake was excellent. It's very fluffy, it's very light. The berries, you season them perfectly. They're not too sweet. I think just where you struggled is the composition of the actual sandwich cookie. For next time, I think if you add 10% cocoa butter or vegetable oil to it, I think that makes a much nicer texture for dipping. I love the compote. It had structure to the berries still, so you took it down to a really nice consistency there. The use of the ruby chocolate is bold. It has that subtle hint of a berry flavor, so it really brought everything together. You brought some great flavors, so thank you. I appreciate that, thank you. Thank you, Krista. Thank you. I am really hoping the chefs notice that I push myself today, but I am very nervous. I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone in this last challenge, but we won't know until we know. Chefs, it's time to send someone home with $10,000. Who's it gonna be, Krista or Tyson? Tyson brought so much to today's competition. He brought polish in all of his plating. His plates were together, organized, and he also brought some big flavors. Tyson started very strong with his uh, clafoutis, but I think Krista overall improved throughout all the three rounds and did better. I think for me, the bolder flavors came from Krista. I thought Krista was always more inspired than Tyson. She had the thought of using the bacon fat. And then in the third round, despite her plate being a hot mess, she put herself out there and she, she took some risks, added a lot of layers. By the end, we had two bakers that were doing things they've never done before, leaving it all on the plate, taking those big swings. Neither achieved exactly what they set out to do. So then we're looking at who achieved more. Krista and Tyson, you both impressed the wall of bakers today. Now it's time to find out who's going home with $10,000. Krista, you stepped outside the box to deliver bold flavors, and the chefs loved that you grew through all three rounds. Tyson, you were confident in the kitchen, bringing plates that demonstrated a high level of skill and technique. Only one of you can walk away with the prize. Krista? You just won Wall of Bakers and $10,000. I just won Wall of Bakers. I kept telling myself that I was worthy of being able to win, and I did it. I could not be more proud of myself right now. <laughs> and Tyson, I, I want to jump in and just tell you that you are unbelievably talented. You should feel very proud. Thank well done. You. Being here and having the chefs taste my dishes has been life-changing to say the least. And it's proven to myself that I can bake. It's been a dream come true just to stand in front of all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Krista. Don't know what 
Goodbye, so sweet. Taste of heaven takes me high. Lift off my feet. Stuck in your sweetness, can't escape. No escape. Holy molasses, my heart's a mess. In this state. Eternal 